Awesome. So, um, yes, my company's called Bazinga. I won't be pitching, but we're always hiring, so check us out, mybazinga.com. Um, I'm here to speak to you about something that's really close to my heart. I've uh, <clears throat> been fortunate to um, kind of share my thoughts with different groups, different walks of life, um, and this is something I've never actually tackled because it's I've always thought it was, was too deep and I'm not sure I can share it with people, especially with five minutes and three minutes of Q&A afterwards. Uh, but I wanted to really try it this time because I think uh, the more people I meet, whether Solder Business School or a lot of people that you mentor, you come across or, or whatever, I just think it's an opportunity to kind of share one or two thoughts a little bit deeper and kind of make you think a little bit more of your entrepreneurship uh, aspirations. So just by show of hands, who's here is a founder, co-founder, technical co-founder? Uh, okay. Uh, show of hands, maybe X founder, co-founders, okay? And then show of hands, somebody that would like in a year, two years, five years to be founder, co-founder. Cool, so good chunk of us here. So um, uh, really what I wanna talk to you about is the cold front. So I uh, grew up in, in Egypt and uh, in the desert, you always hear this thing about the desert, right? In the morning it's really, really hot and at night it's really, really cold. So um, um, it's always an intriguing thing. You can enter in an environment and it literally goes from 35, somebody's smiling, so probably knows what I'm talking about. You can literally go from 35 degrees in the morning, or maybe actually sometimes 45 degrees, and you can go below zero at night. And that's a really interesting thing. So if you've ever spent one or two nights in the desert, you really gotta be prepared for that. It's actually an incredible experience. Um, so we call that a cold front. The definition of it is basically, you know, is, uh, is a transition zone where a cold air mass comes out and literally wipes out hot, Air zone. So imagine you're, you're in a speedo, don't imagine you're in a speedo, but imagine you're in your bathing suit and then literally it just goes freezing. Well, we know the effect of that, but don't imagine that. But, but the, the, the reason I want to talk to you about it is because um, it really is a phenomenon that goes on to an entrepreneur and you go through it. And I'll explain a little bit more, but um, specifically, you know, those hands that came up, uh, you know, obviously, there's a reason why you wanted to become an entrepreneur. It could be you want to be your own boss. But what is the appeal of that? You know, just shout it out. What's the appeal? Is it money? Probably. I can put my hand up. Don't be embarrassed. It's okay. Um, is it money? Uh, is it fame? Is it, uh, as I call it, love? Uh, passion, some people call it. But you have a love for something. You know, guys that are starting um, a healthcare. Obviously, you experience a problem. And, uh, a, health, a healthcare uh, uh, startup, you experience a problem and you're kind of serious about it and you want to fix this problem. Uh, it doesn't hurt that you have financial aspirations, it doesn't hurt that you want to grow it, it doesn't hurt that you might even have a slightly tiny little bit of an ego that you want to see yourself or your group as the co-founders grow into something that solves a massive problem that everybody experienced. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. In this experience, and you know, show of hands showed me about 80, 90% of us here, um, have been bitten by the bug of entrepreneurship somehow, somewhere. Um, there is warmth that comes with that, with that. So, so you're starting this, you know, you want to solve this problem, you're sitting down, you're thinking about it, and you can see yourself, or you can see your product, or you can see your solution, you and your co-founders, um, solving this problem. And the, the, your heart gets a little bit warmer, your body gets a little bit warmer. And then you actually go ahead and, and you start a business, and uh, you get it incorporated. Yes. You write your own check, maybe, or mom, dad, cousins. Yes. Feel a, bit, a little bit warmer, right? Then you go out there, and you're going to actually get some coding happening, and then you got your very first beta out, and you get that out in the hands of your first admirer, and he kind of looks at it, and he hates five things about it, but loves one thing, and you're like, yes, warm, a little bit warmer. And then you move on, and you hand this over to a customer, and wow, you get your first sale doesn't matter what it is. Four bucks, five bucks every month, thousand bucks, two thousand bucks, hundred thousand dollars, whatever the number is. Incredible warmth. You feel amazing. Now you, gotta, you have a business now. You got to go out there. You got to grow it. And then you need investors. And then you get five guys that will tell you to go pound sand and then two will strike you along and then one will actually write a check. Yes! Moving ahead. Warm. I'm feeling like a million dollars right now. Amazing. I got a valuation. I got, I got product market fit, I got sales, I got opportunities. I'm not here to talk to you about that. That, there's a lot of other places. You can go on your, on your Twitter feed or, or, or your, uh, 
Facebook feed and read about all these great successes and people a lot smarter than me can tell you about how to do all these things better. I'm here to talk to you about this. When you're alone, when things go sideways, and it will go sideways, and this is the stuff that you don't read enough about. Um, you go out, maybe you do get your sales, you get your first funding, then you go out there and you hire a bunch of people, and then you start the business, you have a run rate of about a year and a half, you're feeling pretty good, milestones are pretty clear, and then things go sideways. Your product is not fulfilling. Your assumptions are not there. Then you're alone, and I say that not to, say, to, make, not to make it dark, but I say that because that's what happens as an entrepreneur when things go sideways, you literally feel alone. You feel like you're in that cold front. You start not thinking properly, you start not acting properly, you find yourself in a place where, you know, you have to make some tough decisions. You might have to let some people go. Uh, you may have been taken on a ride by a rogue employee or a rogue customer. All these things happen. And then all of a sudden, it's not your Twitter feed where you're going and reading about this company that just raised another three million bucks and this other company that raised five million bucks and a new story about this guy, how he's amazing and he created this amazing company. You're alone. And the reality of what I'm sharing with you is actually 99.9% .9 of startups. That's the reality of what happens. There's not a single successful company that has built a product that nobody else before that tried. They failed, but why did they fail? That's really what, what you gotta be thinking about. It's not, none of the products that we use are somewhat unique. As a matter of fact, I don't, I'm not gonna get through the whole conversation with you because you're familiar with that. A lot of the products that you use have been tried before. I believe it often happened because when the cold front hit the founder or the cold front hit the the person who really matters, he quit or she quit. They didn't have it in them to take that next step. So, you're alone. You can't think properly. You can't feel properly. You don't have any money in the bank. And really, logic says to you, you should pack it up. You're married. You have kids. You're not married. You don't have kids. You are worth a lot more in the open market. You could be a technical co-founder for a startup that's going to raise a lot of money. Um, and you're sitting there going, why am I doing what I'm doing? Maybe I should shut it down. Well, the truth is, yes, a good chunk of the people that go through this will shut it down. Probably in the first time, definitely on the second time. I've been fortunate with a couple of exits in my life. I'm not going to get into it. But I can tell you, a specific company that we had a great success with should have died seven times. Literally should have died seven times. We were too young and too stupid to realize that it should have died seven times. But we ended up selling the company for a few hundred million dollars to a big tech company um, out of Silicon Valley. Not to impress you, just to impress upon you that under normal circumstances, we would have killed the company. Actually, we had no business surviving. So why? What happens when you're feeling in that dark place where you're questioning yourself, where you completely forgot why you started the business, where every logical thought in your head is telling you not to continue. Sorry guys, I know it's a little dark, but just stay with me for a second. Um, what do you do when you're there? Well, I'm gonna kind of try to sum it into a couple of things. Number one, be freaking honest, okay? Um, don't turn around, look in that mirror and be honest about every single step that you genuinely believe you screwed up or you could have done better. Just be honest with yourself. It's the most Simple yet difficult thing a human being goes through. Just the ability not to take blame per se because you're one-on-one, -on -one, you're just by yourself. Just to be able to articulate to yourself what you did or didn't do in a specific situation, how you got here. Because it's so much easier, believe me, I come from the Middle East, we understand victimization, we understand how to feel like the victims, believe me, we get it. But it's so easy to blame everything around you than who you are. We live in a country that's celebrating 150 years. This is nowhere else in the world I'd rather be than this beautiful country of ours. And it gives us opportunities. Is it perfect? No. It's sure as hell a lot more perfect than most other places. And, and it gives us opportunities. Anybody can do anything. Yet, I failed. So what does that say? It must say something about me and my ability. Yes, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Bite the bullet, look yourself in the mirror and go, what could I have done better? And please don't feel sorry for yourself. Again, it's an advice, it's a little deep, but the truth, 
the moment you feel sorry for yourself, everything about you, your, physically energy, your physical appearance, your energy, your, your behavior, your decision making, believe it or not, gets affected when you are feeling sorry for yourself. Nobody wants to feel sorry for you either. So don't be going and seeking an opportunity for others to feel sorry for, yeah, I started a company and then, you know, it was just tough and the market was just, market was terrible and there's no, there's no VC money in this, in this city. Oh, it's terrible. I just couldn't do it. No, it just didn't happen. Don't feel sorry for yourself and actually admit what you could have done better because there's opportunities everywhere. And be clear on your reason. This is probably the most important thing I want you to walk with. So everybody here knows, start with a why. Everybody understands that, I'm sure. If you're not, amazing. Uh, you should definitely read the book. Um, but that why is actually really critical. At the end of the day, um, there will always be multiple reasons for you to not do something, especially if it requires you to exert energy or pain, right? So a startup is painful. Uh, a startup with no money is more painful. A startup with no money and everything going sideways is horrible, yet you gotta get up, put your pants or skirt on, wake up and just go through the whole process of what you have to do. What makes you tick, what makes you do what you do at the end of the day is your own personal reason. And believe it or not, as much as I am such a believer of, of the team environment, at the end of the day, it's a reason for you to do what you do. So if you're making a decision about starting your business, if it's purely money, which is okay, then when you're in the cold front, expect your decision to be weighed with money. So if you're worth more money somewhere else than where you are, then that is the right decision for you to do. But if you do it for other reasons, as an example, solving a specific problem, or you believe if you don't get to the other side of the bridge, you will not help people health-wise. My case, I believe in densification and people living in those condos, we want to help them. I believe in that. And it doesn't matter, there's very little that's going to happen. No matter how cold it gets, it's going to stop me from waking up the next morning and wanting to do that. Some can actually describe that as stupidity. And believe me, you're looking at a guy that's been called that before. Where you go, what's stupidity? Why do you keep trying this? You know, if it didn't work out the second time, third time, pull up your sock and move on. I just believe that the big, biggest, most successful, most cost-affecting companies in the world have had somebody that actually believed that way. And I encourage you to find that. If you're young, I encourage you to do that. If you're just doing a startup and you're raising your money and you got some money in the bank, I encourage you to do that. Go through that personal exercise. Find out your reason. When it all goes sideways, when it's cold, when you're all out there on your own, what will your reason be? If it all goes sideways, why would you wake up next day and do it again? And if you can't answer that, you got a problem because when it does happen, and often does, you're going to be out there in the cold alone. My final thing to say to you is keep your feet moving. And, and anybody likes hockey here, they always say that keep your feet moving in hockey. In soccer, we do the same thing. You know, you're, 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 you're running out of your energy, your heart rate is, is double the, the average rate, you're exa exhausted, you haven't found your second wind. What I always tell I coach, so I always tell the kids keep your feet moving. The moment you start, Stopping, your lactic acid will build, blah, blah, blah. Same thing in business. You just get hit the third blow. Biggest customer just left you, went to the uh, competition. So not only do you not have money, your top sales guy just told you he's leaving, and you just lost your biggest customer. That's a shitty night. Between scotch, between the fact that you have to be smiling because you're a dad or a mom, and you have to act like a normal human being in front of your kids, and between the fact that you have to wake up in the morning and pick up the phone and talk to your investors that are telling you what gives. Keep your, move, keep your feet moving. Wake up in the morning. Be ready. Don't give up. Go out there with vigor. The people around you, your staff, is going to get their cue from you that this is going to be okay. It might be all going sideways, but it's going to be okay because he's, he's moving his feet. He's still pushing forward. That's a simple thing, believe me. It's so easy to put the wrong shirt on, put the crappy shoes on, not put the makeup, if you're a woman, not fix your hair properly. The little things like that add up and you feel yourself aging and aging and aging. It makes a difference. Wake up with vigor, go after what you're set out to do. Why? Because you have a reason. 
That's it. I hope it wasn't too dark, but I'm happy to take any questions or if I took too much time. Thank you. Thanks, Joseph. Um, if you've got a question, throw your hand up and I'll bring the mic over. Hey, Joseph, James here, uh, first time out. Uh, what I'd like to know is, uh, what's your reason? Um, uh, overall, my reason is I like creating stuff. I like solving real life problems. Uh, my current company, Bazinga, my reason is, um, if you ever lived in a strata or lived in a condo and you got frustrated, you don't know your neighbors, and, and you feel like you know your property management company is not doing a great job and there's an opportunity to connect, and at the end of the day, I feel we built technology that connects almost 2,000 communities in, in Canada now and North America. And um, they love what we do. It, it enhances and improves their lives. So on a cold night, I'm thinking, if I don't wake up tomorrow with my big smile and push right through, it can affect 2,000 communities, 130,000 homes. These are households that depend on what we do. Thank you. And next question, Leo. Um, hi, uh, I've got a question. I used to be a co-founder of, uh, of a project that come from, uh, from our school, and then it's an idea, a simple idea. Uh, but then what happened is we got a team of three, and I wasn't pretty good at technology back then, but then what happened is we have a split decision about like the, the product that we're gonna make, and I completely don't agree with them because they're a team of three, but those two guys, uh, they believe that it's gonna succeed, but I am saying like it's not gonna work, right? And in the end, it turns out it's not working, but like it doesn't matter in the end because it's, it's failed, right? So I wonder like what would you do when you got a very, um, how do I say that? You, you completely don't agree with your, your team partners like, what are you going to do? I mean, uh, I'm probably going through a bunch of people's minds. I mean, what you guys didn't have is a reason. You didn't have a calling. I mean, I mean that respectfully. You know, you're a young guy, and you're going to do really well. But the, 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 if we don't, how we get to the reason is almost irrelevant. And this is where the more ideas, the better, right? So if your reason was... I don't know what the project was, but it was a gaming company. And our game, gaming project is to create the absolute most dazzling, engaging, family-oriented game. How we get there, we're all allowed opinions or actually encourage disagreements. But I'm not convinced, and I, this is really difficult for me to obviously comment in, in depth, but I'm not convinced you guys all had a reason. I mean, that's, and this is the core of what you, you start. So, um, uh, you know, in, in your case, you're too young to be stressed about it, so let it go and move on and, and start your next thing. But, uh, but hopefully you take some of this advice through. Next question, anything over here? Oh, Dave. Dave, Dave, Dave. Thanks, Kendi. So you mentioned a few things that might have happened to you. <laughs> no, you, did, you weren't. My life has been yeah, but uh, so I, I'm curious, you must have had stories that you were familiar with uh, from other people, other people's journeys that you looked at and said, well, if he or she got through that, I can handle this. Can you tell us one of those stories or one of, about one of those people? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm blessed with an incredible amount of friends that have gone through some incredible things that inspired me, so to your point, and I, I have gone through a lot myself. Um, you know, look, you got to take yourself a lot less seriously when you're an entrepreneur. And, uh, and one of the, the more basic examples I can think of is I find myself always trying to complicate my solutions. I'm a, I'm a techie. Uh, I'm more on the product side than I am on, on the uh, coding side, so I'm not a, I'm not a software engineer. Um, so I sit down and I, and uh, there's a specific friend of mine out of, um, out of Toronto that had a startup and uh, uh, I was sat with him having a beer one time, this was probably seven years ago, and um, you know, we're kind of sharing battle stories basically. And um, he was showing me his solution and then I was like, wow, this is really cool and what's really cool is you can take the solution and 
and convert it into this. And then if you get this kind of customer base, then you can convert that into this. And you're going to have four monetization models. And here I am, like, trying to, you know, mentor him. He's a little bit younger than me. And then he looked at me and he goes, wow, too complicated. So he goes, okay, so okay, well, I'll just go nail this first part. So he calls me, um, you know, we stayed in touch. I, I kind of lost track of what he was doing. And he called me, um, uh, he called me two years later. Oh, sorry, uh, but six months later, I'd say. And, um, and he had sold his company to uh, a technology company for about $45 million. And he had raised, at that point, only raised $700,000, $800,000. Um, what was, the, you know, the, the gist here of the story was, you know, in many ways, I may have put myself in the cold front by complicating my world, right? That's another thing that's not gone missing on me. Um, meaning, you know, in my history, you know, you go, you build a business, you complicate it, you might look for, like I said, maybe multiple monetization streams or, or whatever the case, maybe everybody's got their own, their own direction from a company point of view. But this guy just kept it simple. He didn't, we, you know, veer and literally built something special. Now, is there a little bit of luck involved? Probably. But is there amazing execution involved? Absolutely. Um, and is there conviction? He had his own reason, and it was actually a pretty cool product. Um, so, you know, that's kind of one lens for me that I remember um, on, on that front. And, and, and for me, there is, you know, how many people are spiritual? Don't worry, I'm not going to be asking Christianity. You know, it's like, whatever, it's spiritual. Just have your own kind of place. And, you know, it's kind of funny. I, I, uh, when I do have or I have had uh, historically these, these difficult moments, um, you know, you look around and you look at your reasonable odds of any survival or fixing a problem or avoiding a massive, you know, business bomb that got thrown your way. And you go, logically, I should really not survive this. And then you go out and you kind of have your, whether you meditate or you have your own conversation with, with you know, whoever's above you that you believe in. And uh, you just kind of move your feet and it happens. And... You know, I'd like to say I was really, really good. Like maybe if one day I wrote a book or something, I'm going to like lie because I want my kids to think I'm awesome and I'm going to say like I was amazing. A lot of it I can't really explain. It's just literally the function of moving your feet and just believing you're going to wake up next day and it's going to get better. Um, so that, that's the theme of a lot of my friends. A lot of people believe in what I just said. That just this concept of dealing with it, move your feet and you'll be okay. So. Thank you so much, Joseph. That was, oh, one Sorry. last question. Okay, no worries. Um, hi, uh, my name is Steven. I, I call myself a, re a recovering perfectionist and a recovering control freak. Um, something you just said about, because I, I have a techie engineer background and I tend to complicate things as well. What, what have you, how have you overcome that if you have? And what are some of the things that you do when you find yourself complicating things? Or have you certain triggers or certain things that you've discovered to sort of... Well, knowing it exists is half the battle, right? Like, congratulations, you know, you know that it exists. I feel the same way, right? Um, so that's one thing you kind of, you're conscious of all the time. Um, the second thing really is just surrounding yourself with people that will tell you no. And I was just having a conversation with somebody earlier. Um, you know, the problem with the founder who's got purpose, the problem with him is that everybody else around him get bitten by the bug. And all of a sudden, they all become yes. So, so you actually literally need to sit with your executive team and say to them, yes, we're all 100% committed to this cause, and we have so much passion for it, but you sure as hell let me know when I'm being off track. If if what I'm doing is, is not on track, if I'm complicating it, if, if I'm do, you know, taking too much risk, whatever the case may be. So surrounding yourself with that, because, uh, you know, listen, it's not a blessing having this problem, right? Seeing things over five, ten steps ahead sounds really good when you're sitting down over a beer and telling people, I can see things that far ahead. It's actually a disaster. Like, the most successful people don't think that far. They actually think a lot less, two or three steps ahead, not ten steps ahead. So this is something that you need to be really conscious of and try to fix on your own. But surrounding yourself with people that will help you with that will go a long way. So, so thank you, Joseph. A round of applause.